Right, welcome everyone to this afternoon session celebrating two billion images on Mapillary, the street level imagery platform. My name's Eduardo and I'm here with Saeed. Um, so I'm gonna start out and then I'll pass to Saeed a bit later in the presentation. But um, yeah, we're talking about Mapillary, street level imagery platform that recently reached two billion images thanks to the contributions of many of the people in this room. Uh, Mapillary is part of Meta now, that happened in 2020, so it's been a while now, and it's obviously a very useful tool for Meta to build their maps out. Um, we'll probably be talking a bit more about that tomorrow, but today we want to focus on the street level imagery platform and um, some of the cool stuff that we've been working on and celebrate the milestone. Does anyone know what happened on October 8th, 2013? Mapillary is founded, that's uh, wrong. Um, apparently the God particle theorists won the Nobel Prize in physics. The North Koreans restarted their nuclear reactor once again. And Scarlett Johansson, sexiest woman alive yet again. So that was, that was about 10 years ago now. Also, very close, Mapillary's first image was uploaded, the first sequence. This was uploaded by Jan Erik in Malmo, Sweden. And it's not a great sequence for the very first sequence. It's a bit blurry, uh, but there we go. That was the, where it all started. And since then we've had obviously millions and then billions around the world. Including very recently, Philip is sitting very proudly at the front. He had his first uh, or his latest sequence um, uploaded just outside this venue using the GoPro that he's probably got in his chest. So 10 years of Mapillary made possible by you guys. Thank you for supporting this crowdsource project. A crazy idea. Um, so just give yourselves a round of applause for believing in this and making it possible. It is a bit like OpenStreetMap. Like if you go back to the founding of OpenStreetMap, I probably would not have believed in it. I think it's a crazy idea. Same sort of thing, getting people to upload so much imagery around the world. And then you can just see here, we've shown this map a lot of times at different conferences and it's always getting denser and denser. You're always seeing new places that you're kind of scratching your head as to how someone was able to upload imagery in a place like North Korea. But here we are, you guys find a way. Um, for those, uh, hands up if you've never uploaded to, uh, to Mapillary before. Okay, so a significant chunk. This is for you guys. This is why it's actually a useful thing to do. If you have a smartphone, you can download the application. And, and the reason people do this, the reason they upload to Mapillary is because every image that's uploaded is processed and then we extract map data from that. So I mentioned Mapillary is part of Meta. We extract map data to build maps um, that Meta users in our products and services, um, in Instagram, in WhatsApp, in Facebook, and some AR and VR things that we're working on. But this all goes to OpenStreetMap as well. And so we're talking about things like utility poles, traffic signs, uh, the location of bicycle parking, sidewalks, all things that are incredibly useful to building up a detailed map of the planet. And also for um, making sure we respect privacy, we extract faces and um, work out, we segment the image to work out where people are so we can blur, blur sensitive information like license plates and faces. So if you think about contributing, there's a few ways you can do it. I mentioned the smartphone apps and um, they're very easy. You just walk outside you, if you've got the app downloaded and it'll automatically take photos for you. But a lot of the people in this room, they're a bit more, um, you know, selective. They want high quality imagery or particularly 360 imagery. So if you're interested in 360 imagery, there's the GoPro Max at $500. There's the Lab Pano, which is a bit more above that. Um, not a huge leap in image quality. And then there's the Insta360 Pro. There's also um, Jeffrey, hands up in the front from Mosaic. He's got an amazing camera, which he can show you, um, which he's carrying around. And uh, how, how much will one of those cost, Jeffrey? 20,000 if you've got 20,000 um, in your back pocket. But he's, he's got other ideas on, on more affordable cameras too. So there's a whole range of ways you can contribute. Um, and, and all this imagery is of course important for OpenStreetMap and we're gonna talk about why. 
But first, to make sure you're paying attention to me, we're going to play our favorite game, GeoGuessr, Where in the World is This Place? Um, T-shirts on offer. Uh, if you come up at the end and if you've won, just tell us your size and where you want us to send it. Where in the world is this? I'm going to take cities. Um, if we can't get cities, we'll go in countries. Bingo. So Ghent is the correct answer, starting nice and easy. So you, sir, get a t-shirt. Just make sure you come and find us at the end. So what have we been working on? Obviously, 10 years is a long time. We've had our ups and downs. Um, recently, it's, it's got kind of new life, Mapler. It's really exciting to see. We're, we're seeing um, some significant updates, app updates to the UX um, that you might have noticed. This is what the old UX looked like. Um, it was very much like a hobbyist's tool. Uh, a, lot of, a lot of features there that were useful but weren't getting a lot of use. And this made it harder for new people to get involved. And so a big part of what we're trying to do is making it easy for someone who's downloading this app to work out how can I get street level imagery very quickly. And you know why, give them some motivation about why to contribute. Because if they're not actually staying and, and they're leaving, then um, the project obviously doesn't do as well. So some of the things we've been working on are that simplified user experience. Uh, we changed the default to a higher interval of capture. So looking back at 2010, smartphones were very different to how they are now. And you know, using, um, taking photos like twice a second was very demanding for a phone back then. Now most modern phones can take multiple frames per second very easily. And, and so one thing that we've done is, is default to three meter capture. So we have a lot of overlap between images and that means better map data. We're trying to unify the experience on iOS and Android. The two apps have been quite um, disseparate over time. iOS has always had features that Android didn't have much to the, the chagrin of Android users. We're much closer to parity, net, parity now and, and that is the goal we're working towards. Um, we have things like leaderboards implemented now it's easy to access your captures so you can see what, what you have done. Um, we have different map styles that you see here. If you go to your profile, then you'll see, yeah, like the captures that you've done are much easier to see so that you can work out where you plan to go next. And um, you're gonna see much more over the next few months in terms of new UX improvements. So we're really excited about that. We are often in the forum hearing from users like Philip about what they like and what, what you don't like. So, so do share your feedback there about what you'd like to see next. I think some of the stuff that I've been most excited about over the last year, um, particularly if we think of like 10 years of Mathlory, the thing that's really changed is just how easy it is to contribute really good data now. The people that first started, they, they would get the old GoPros that didn't have GPS and they would record a GPS track and then they would use command line to sync the video frames with the GPS frames and it was really like really clunky. People did it, which was amazing, um, but it obviously stopped a lot of people from contributing. Now you just drag and drop a lot of the files. So if you have a GoPro, whether it's the GoPro 11 or a GoPro Max, or you have a similar camera like that that supports the cam file format, which is a, a commonly used video format on, on cameras such as this, you can just drag and drop. And if the camera has GPS embedded, we'll read that GPS and you can just make sure they're okay and upload them. Mapler tools are still a thing. Um, if you do want to use command line, you can do that. Um, it, it has, it's usually kind of a bit ahead. Um, so our desktop uploader actually runs off Mapler tools, but uh, Mapler tools is usually a bit further ahead in terms of camera su support and gives you more options in terms of how you use, how you process the imagery. And now we're at the next location check. Um, just shout out if you know where this is. You get a t-shirt, Jeffrey. I think you deserve one. So Seoul is correct. This is, uh, I think, I think this is Southern Seoul. So one thing that uh, you just uh, mentioned today was the camera grant program. Was anyone in the Belgian session today? the OpenStreetMap Belgian session, a few here. So he mentioned that uh, Maplory and OSM Belgium, or Meta and OSM Belgium, are collaborating on a camera grant program. This is something that a lot of people have asked us, you know, I want to contribute, but I don't have... 
the 360 cam that Saeed, our, our model, is holding. Um, so what we're doing, we're sending out these cameras, thanks to us in Belgium. Um, you can apply for one. And we include the selfie stick, we'll, we include something to mount it to your car, and also a bicycle mount. So depending on how you travel in Europe, you can get one of these. We're doing it in the US as well, if you're based in the US, but given we're in Europe here, um, the focus is on Europe. And we're starting with 20 cameras, but as we mentioned earlier today, like we wanna scale that up. So if they get used, hopefully next year, this could be a lot more cameras. And we're already seeing in the US that that program's a bit further ahead, that they're finding it really useful. They're contributing a lot of 360 imagery. And the reason that kind of Meta has an interest in this is, is we care a lot about like the location of sidewalks for some of the maps that we're building, um, which we found that it's really hard to map sidewalks from satellite imagery alone. Some people have spoken about that today. It's much better if you have ground level. I think um, even Alan Mustard mentioned that in the talk this morning. It's much better if you have ground truth data. And so um, that's what this is encouraging. So if you're interested in creating better crown truths of Europe, do apply for a camera. I'll maybe go to that link just quickly if you want to take a photo. It's openstreetmap.be slash English slash projects slash street level imagery. I used to put a bit.ly link here and a QR code, but they charge you for that and then it would expire like by the time you actually went to look at it later on. So here's a longer link for you. So looking for people who are regular contributors to Mapley, try the smartphone app before you do this. Um, plan for how you use the imagery. So we want to know like what is your intention with the imagery. Ideally, you're based in Europe or the United States. And if you're applying, make sure you can actually capture it often because we don't want the camera to be gathering dust on a shelf. It's better if it's out there. So either, as, as you said this morning, you're crazy and you, you'll use it a lot, or you have a network of people that will be able to use it regularly. If those things are true, then you'd be a great candidate and would love to send you a GoPro Max. Another one for you. This one's a bit harder. It's not China. It's closer to uh, this part of the world. No. It's one of the youngest countries, if I'm allowed to say that, in Europe. Yes, correct. It's uh, Kosovo. Well done. So just before I pass it to Saeed, um, hopefully you know how to contribute to Mapillary now and a bit about why it's useful. But just to hammer that point home about how Mapillary can be useful, I really like the example of the World Bank recently in Colombia. And they took a variety of open data sets that governments have contributed. The one on the right, or uh, yeah, on your right as well, is the Waze um, data set about where accidents were taking place. And they actually did like a correlation with Maplery data and we're trying to see, is Maplery identifying anything that seemed to correlate with these high traffic um, accident areas in Bogota? And um, they actually worked with the government to try and eradicate some of the, uh, the, the things that they were noticing, like lack of guardrails or um, just poorly signed areas or places with um, not enough traffic lights. And so they've actually made infrastructure investments based on correlating data sets like Waze and Maplery. So that's one example. I'm gonna pass it to Saeed to talk about some others. Thanks, Ed. So I'm Saeed, I'm project manager at uh, Meta's open mapping team. And I will bring from two billion images to uh, uh, closer to where we are at the moment. So you're seeing like Brussels map which is basically covered by one man only. So that's Stefan, who is also part of OSM Belgium, who ride a cycle every street in Brussels, more than 4,000 kilometers and capture more than 600,000 images. Big kudos to him to document cycling infrastructure and help OpenStreetMap come to improve cycling network for OSM. So basically, those are the data which you can turn your street level imagery into map data. So you can see like some of the example, Mapillary ex uh, can extract more than 1,500 traffic signs globally, and then more than 40 objects, uh, street furnitures, crosswalks, uh, manholes, shop signs, utility poles, etc. 
those can be extracted from uh, street level imagery, not only for Brussels, for everywhere. So wherever you have Mapillary imagery, you can turn your street level imagery into map data. And we are getting closer to Brussels. So those are Brussels footway data, which is generated from uh, street level imagery. As you can see that they are pretty good network, uh, as you would guess. It's an urban area, very dense urban area, and then you can see that street level imagery can be used also like extracting um, footway data. And then this is why we are basically um, working on like increasing like fresh coverage uh, on Mapillary to basically update sidewalk and um, crosswalk coverage in those cities. So we are not only using like Mapillary extracted um, sidewalk detection, and uh, we are also working a lot with local OSM communities as well as partners. So a couple of examples here. So I have been collaborating with Polymappers. Here we have Lorenzo and Federica. And then also um, mapping agency in Milan, Amat. And then, so we come together and we team up and the map split limits um, to map out like a safer pedestrian areas in, in Milan. Because Amat, which is the mobility agency, did a pretty good job. They map all the sidewalks uh, in Milan. So we are basically adding more attributes on it, like speed limits. And also we uh, build a streamlined QA way that we weekly check all of the um, pedestrian map data edits uh, in Milan and then reporting those uh, bad edits such as like missing crossings or conflicting tags. So you may have like some crosswalk map as a like un unmarked crosswalk, but it has like zebra attributes. So we are checking all of those quality aspect of like pedestrian map data to provide like better pedestrian routing experience. And we have also some ongoing project in Rome to increase uh, sidewalk coverage in Rome uh, with University of um, Rome. And we have some efforts also in US, uh, which Ed is leading also New York um, and uh, DC mapping. So those are like um, project maps, uh, tasking manager links to the project. If you are interested in the checkout, uh, some of this project and contribute, you can just visit task.mapvidai project slash for New York, one for, all, one for nine, or you can take a picture. And we are engaging with community and then collaborating with local OSM community as well as um, uh, pedestrian advocate groups and cycling groups, et cetera, to improve uh, sidewalk coverage and then street level imagery coverage in those locations. All right, let's check in. Any guess? Where is this picture is taken? I don't know if you can see the sign for him. Um, no, not far from Europe. Yes, you got it. Who was it? Okay. All right, let's continue. And okay, you got a data, you got street level imagery, you extract um, map data. Okay, how do you really utilize all of the imagery as well as data. And if you wanna build your own thing, what do you do? So we have basically like different tools for developers. We have Mapper API, where you can basically call all the imagery and also access all the Mapper detection as well as extracted feature through API and then surface those features uh, on your own application. And then we have Mapper JavaScript library, which is basically street level imagery um, viewer where you can build your app on the top of it. If you basically search like Mapri, uh, JS, uh, there is a GTAP repo where you can see the further documentation. And then we have also like coverage tiles and Mapri Python SDK where you can um, use it. Those are all open source. Mapri Python SDK is a tool that when you want to extract seed scale like map data from Mapri generated um, map data, you can use like um, Mapri Python SDK. All right, next check-in. Where do you think this is? One shot. You're right. I, don't, I didn't see. I didn't catch. Okay, yes, Mexico. It's from Mexico City. Uh, there is a huge group of cyclists, uh, advocacy group. They collected uh, street-level imagery across uh, Mexico, not only Mexico City. And they have been, like, collecting all the cycling networks uh, in the main uh, cities in Mexico, and they're also updating those cycling networks on OpenStreetMap, which is great use case. Keep an eye on our blog post. We are sharing uh, their story very soon. And this is something super cool. We are also experimenting. 
And all of those uh, street level images are, uh, are using the extract uh, map data generation as well as you can really generate like some cool stuff. So that's one of the example that we generated like Nerf. I don't know if you heard like Nerf. It's very hype like last, uh, I don't know, last years I would say. Since 2020, uh, first uh, paper was published and then it become a thing. So usually there is a way of like generating 3D model from like photogrammetric approach. But with the neural radiance field, basically you are creating like a smoother uh, neural network uh, supported like mod 3D models uh, by matching the pixels. So this is one example from New York and it, it's looking pretty cool actually. This uh, NERF was generated from like 50 images only, which is absolutely amazing, very smooth. And then uh, the resolution is not great because of uh, the GIF, but it's actually pretty cool. And if you wanna join uh, Maplery community, we have a uh, Facebook group, Maplery uh, FB, if you just go to this short link or if you search um, Maplery worldwide on Facebook, you can join uh, Maplery's first Facebook group. This is uh, one basic like community channel we are actively using. Then we have a forum, forum.maplery.com. This is where we are hanging out mostly and then um, communicating with our you know, uh, Maplery contributors, Maplery community, and we have also Telegram channel for instant communication, and then we are basically stay in touch over there. And you can also check out like uh, our help pages. So this is a center of like help articles where you can um, search whatever you need. Um, yeah, that's pretty much. If you have a question, we are happy to um, answer your questions or comments, discussion, we are all happy to discuss. Thank you so much. Okay, thank you Eduardo, thank you Said. If there are questions, just raise your hands. Okay, so maybe we start. Um, since you are very interested, I contribute and I collaborate in the collection of 360 images in Milano for, uh, for, for mapping sidewalks. This is very useful to have these kind of images. Do you think that could be some kind of uh, automation or some processing that you think to have that could help uh, in, for example, detecting the type of paving or some kind of that information that could also reduce uh, the, the, faster the mapping of these type of elements? I mean, I will just quickly uh, mention that like the footway generation is already um, in pro progress. So we are working on like bringing those footway generation into rapid. So where you can basically review data. You don't need to really uh, generate a uh, draw a geometry. This will be uh, pre-populated and uh, conf uh, conflated on rapid already. So you will see only like missing sidewalks uh, on rapid. You can uh, just uh, verify for this geometry and then uh, ingest to OpenStreetMap. So Rapid is a map editing tool where uh, you can basically get some uh, AI assistant that uh, which basically draws geometry for you. You just need to uh, validate it uh, before you ingest OpenStreetMap. So there is also like uh, street level imagery um, window where you can uh, validate uh, the you know environment while checking like the street level imagery. Regarding like surface type, we don't have uh, so much on going on around like extracting like surface surface types. You want to add anything? Cool. Any other questions? Um, regarding data freshness, uh, of course, it varies on the country or the the area that you're locating in. But how often do you feel like? Uh, well, how oh. How often do you feel like the area should be recorded again to pick up new changes and stuff? Okay, I mean, it's pretty much like OpenStreetMap data. And then how often do you require like updated data? It depends the really existing community in the local area. If local community is very active. I mean, I, mean, I know like also in Belgium community is pretty active, both like updating map data as well as like street level imagery data. It depends really the community uh, where you are. Um, but yeah, I mean, sidewalk geometries will not be really needed a lot of update, but when it comes to like stores or other street furniture may maybe where I more.
but I would say like one year old street level imagery is still good street level imagery, I would say. Any other question? Meanwhile, if you answer the question, uh, please don't forget to check in with us so we can get your addresses and then to send t-shirts. Yeah. 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 Is there any plan to um, do OCR to extract text from images from which you could build yeah, a we, we have, we have geographic been doing, like, large language model? Yeah, there is nothing coming soon. So okay. it's more like experimental. But that would be really cool. Yeah, is it okay? Yeah. Uh, hi, thank you for this great uh, presentation. I, I have one question. Um, uh, I can see that uh, your focus is on 360s right now, but do you have any plans actually to um, fix or maintain JOSM plugin, which is actually a clunky, and uh, before you click on, on some image, you can get uh, one one track, but afterwards you you are getting another and something like that. So uh, it is difficult to use at the moment. But um, do you have any plans to 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 fix the plugin? Yes, and Nemanja is referring to the, the Mapillary Jossen plugin, which was actually a beautiful uh, community project by 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 whose name I'm forgetting, but I was part of Google Summer of, of Code, and I think since then hasn't really got a lot of support. Um, if that's something you guys want, let us know and we could look into a way to fund future development of it. Um, I'm not sure how much it's used right now. But overall, like, um, there is someone from our team, Taylor, is like maintaining you know, GTAP repos, but there is no like new features coming out. It's mostly like, you know, fixing bugs and issues. Uh, but if something really in use from your side, I mean, happy to chat. Thank you so much, everyone. Thank you.